Hey, good afternoon and welcome to Sports Talk Live with me, Mr. Khrod Puam. Um, today's guests are truly special to, to, to Pendren. Now, these boys matriculated in 2016 and at the beginning of that year, they did something special for themselves and for Pendren. Now, I would like to chat about the 2016 athletic season, and, but before I do that, I would like to introduce my guests. Mr. Yaku Kastens, who was the head of athletics in 2016, and the boys under 19 relay team that won gold at Inter High in Leidenberg in the same year. Gwanda Machola, Adri Kutsia, Gurulam Tulu, and Ernest Mtetwa. Gentlemen, a good afternoon. I just want to find out how you're doing during these trying times. I'm starting with you, Mr. Kastens. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Kredbom, and my my lovely four amazing athletes and the rest of Penryn. Yeah, and no, I'm doing well. Thank you very much. I think if you manage to look 50 when you are 50, then you're doing good and then you are blessed. So hopefully hopefully that's true for me. Yes, I, I left Penryn in 2018 and um, pursuing my midlife adventure here in the UAE and thoroughly enjoying it. So obviously miss Penryn, but uh, there's no future in the past. So uh, enjoying our stay here. Ah, that's you. lovely to hear, Mr. Kastens. And um, Gwanda Machola, how you been doing? How you been holding up during this trying time? Uh, good afternoon, sir. Both Mr. Kastens and Mr. Hrutboom and the gentleman that got us that gold. Um, I've been good, so I mean, I'm still, my studies have continued through online learning, so um, I'm just trying to stay up to date with all of that and also staying active because I was losing my mind a bit um, in week three and four, but uh, I think I've come back through and um, yeah, it's just nice to see familiar faces as well. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful, Gwanda. Patrick, to your side? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Carstens. Very nice to see you guys as well. Big thanks for having us. But uh, no, on my side, things have been going well. Um, lockdown has definitely been a change and a, a, a big change in routine. Um, the, all my studies have been going on online, so it's been very different, but it's been going well. Um, definitely enjoyed my time in Stellenbosch the last bit, so hopefully we can finish the academic year and I can finish my undergraduate studies. Um, but yeah, it's very lucky to be here and uh, thanks a lot for having us. Only a pleasure. Mr. Mtetwa. Uh, good afternoon, sir and, and gentlemen. Um, yeah, no, through these times we've been trying to, you know, push as much as we can. Um, it's tough on, on, on us because I'm, I'm, I'm in sales now, so it's a bit tough. I mean, the economy just turned upside down completely. But um, we have to push where we can, and yeah, it's, it's been it's been good. It's been good. Thanks for having us, uh, Munir. Now I'm glad everyone is doing well. I know Kurula was just struggling with connectivity there, so we might not have him for the interview. Now, gentlemen, I just want to go back to 2016. Um, it was my first year at Pendren, and I think I managed to um, sneak into the bus going to Leidenberg. Um, and you know, I just need when when we got there. I know it was a a, a lovely show, but I just want to touch base on the whole season itself. Now, in December 2015, you guys would have received, or or maybe November, you would have received a training program to get you ready for 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 um, athletic season. Um, I just want to find out now because you guys needed to train um, for 2016. What did you have to do um, and how long did you have to prepare for, for, for the athletic season, knowing that the first week you come back, you might have um, inter-house athletics already? Gwanda, what, what can you say? Um, I just, I remember the last week of school, like just before we started writing exams, Mr. Costins would, um, called all the that year's athletes together and uh, the sprinters were given sprinting programs. Um, and I tried to keep the discipline as much as I could, but obviously you can't just be doing running. So I also added some weights in, as was very evident in my heaviness in the 100 meter at the end house. But um, I feel like it definitely paid off in the end, as was clearly seen. 
Hedrick? Uh, I also remember those uh, formidable training programs that were handed out uh, <coughs> after exams. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm very glad there wasn't uh, a lots of recon when we returned regarding those programs at least we could uh, just kind of slide there and just huff and puff and act like we were fine but uh, definitely put in um, as many training sessions as we could over the holidays. Um, I remember the beginning of the year with Inter House um, I picked up a bit of a groin strain so that set me back a bit initially but um, yeah after the uh, next few weeks it wasn't that hectic but it, it carried on running and, and slowly got back into it. Um, but yeah, his training throughout the season was uh, was very lacker. Yeah. Okay, Ernest, what can you remember? Yeah, well, I, I remember when we got those programs. I mean, I'm I'm a guy who, <laughs> me and fitness, we two different uh, people. <laughs> so it was it was just about when we got after getting those programs. It was just the discipline of keeping on that program and and working hard and at least taking three hours of your day doing that program or, or two hours or, or so that actually made the difference because mm -hmm. when you got back to the next year and then the inter house was there then you all you had to do is just brush off the rusted parts and and, and work harder towards the final goal um, mm -hmm. as was clearly seen at the end mm -hmm. now that's 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 beautiful gentlemen now mr Custins, i just want to ask you because of course now you would have given out programs and you're expecting a lot from your athletes what were your plans with all the athletes just to prepare them for, for the season and um, as well for, 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 for Inter High? What were your general plans for, for Pendron athletes? Yeah, just turn on my mic there. Yeah, um, Mr. Kridbom, there was a bigger plan, which um, obviously uh, the gentleman present here <laughs> done. Uh, know about and the bigger plan was really just from my side to make sure that all the athletes enjoy running that they enjoy exercising and that that it becomes a lifelong habit mm -hmm. and uh, that's why I asked each one of them you know what are they what are they keeping themselves busy with at the moment and um, mm -hmm. so I think especially now with the lockdown and all these things that are happening um, the importance of exercises is, uh, cannot be um, cannot be emphasized enough so what what I tried to do was basically fight the winter sport uh, which was which was a tough thing to do it was always always an issue um, so I had my little programs and you know we tried pre-season and all that but you know, if I look at these guys, all I could see were rugby balls. You know? And um, so athletics was always sort of, uh, it was the little run there on the side. And, you know, everybody wants the big glory moments. They all want to get those gold medals and things, but um, not everybody wants to put in the, the long hours of training. And Ernest also mentioned it there. It's really, really tough to, to do that over the holiday. Mm -hmm. So um, I think my, my plan was to basically just be a cheerleader <laughs> and mm -hmm. to encourage them to do as much as they can pre-season. Mm -hmm. And um, I tried to motivate them by saying that this will improve the rugby and the netball and the hockey and all those things, which I think is so um, the pre-season exercise program was a bit like plugging a dead horse. Mm. <laughs> I tried my best and uh, I had some good results. So. Mm. Mm. Now, um, leading up to the to the boys under 19 relay um, race at at at, um, at Inter High, of course, you would have weeks before or weeks prior had to um, participate in other friendly meetings, your law field hires and other you. Did you guys sort of have an idea with this team, say, whoa, listen, gentlemen, we, we've got something going there. Was, there. was there anything that you saw in the previous um, meetings uh, prior into high? Ernest? 
Yeah, well, so I, I, well, from my side, when we first ran our our first relay race, I told myself, I said, you know what, we can do a lot um, with this team. It was only the issue of uh, who to run where. Um, because we changed around the whole season um, and I ended up speaking to, to Karula and telling him, look, people are putting forth people at which points. Um, and then I told him where we can win the race is at that last bend. Um, mm-hmm. So we decided to choose our fastest player and I mean, and, and runner. And we said, look, if you take that bend and I even, and I remember telling Norbert and those fast guys from other schools that, look, if I catch that baton first, there's no way of fetching me because this is my <laughs> last one and I have to push, you know? Mm-hmm. And after that, I think, that, that before the race, when we spoke with the guys and said, "This is all. This is we give it all, and we, we, we just push." It was it was a good result. At the end. Mm. I see Kurula has joined us, um, and there's some music in the background there. Kurula, welcome. I'm struggling, guys. Okay, we can continue. Um, Hedrick, you, can you what, what can you tell me? No, I, I agree with Ernest. Uh, throughout the season, it was actually really nice. We had the opportunity uh, to play around with different combinations, which were which was, in the end, very much to our benefit. Um, I remember, I ran home straight at the stage, and I started once, and then I ran back straight, and everyone everyone switched around until we found what worked. And the order that we ran was what worked, and what we wanted to do for Inter High, and I think. The team in general, we had four really quick guys versus some of the other teams that had more individuals that were very much faster than us. But mm-hmm. uh, I didn't have an entire team that was so equally balanced, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. So I think we also gelled well. And throughout the practice in the season, it really just, everything just worked to our benefit. And yes, in the end, it was unreal. Mm-hmm. Gwenda? <laughs> Um, I think the point that Hadrick raised was definitely an important one. Um, us having that benefit and the opportunity of having four, like a whole solid team of very quick guys that are running incredibly quick times um, at a very comfortable rate, uh, it turned out to be a really good thing for us. And um, well, like they said, we were able to experiment throughout the season. And once we did finish, find our best finish and our best combination, we were able to use that in the inside and it paid great dividends. Mm-hmm. No, that's beautiful. Um, Karula, I don't know if you can hear me. Okay, he's, he's left again. Now, as Pendrin, we're not that big a school. So come into high. Now you're on the day, you're not thinking about the, the, the final race because of course you would have had some races before that. Um, what 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 was the mindset um, in, during the morning um, of 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 Inter High? What was the mindset, um, knowing that you're going to be running the the, the boys under 19 um, relay, but of course you have other events that you need to do? Um, Kwanda, can you still remember? Um, I do remember. I'll, firstly, we had to wake up very early. I think I was up at around 4 a.m. Um, so that's already nerves building from probably having only slept about four hours, which was quite ridiculous. Um, very nervous at being your last into high as well. But I was very confident in the relay team itself because we we had that conversation extensively in practice and even just in passing during the day, knowing that we actually have a good chance of, if not winning it, definitely securing the top three. So the nerves are there, but the belief was also there in trusting my teammates. Okay. Um, Hendrik, so how many events did you have to do or participate in before the, the, the main event? And that was always the trickiest thing about these meetings, is planning your day with various events and the different times that they happen. Um, I did the 100 as well. I can't remember. I don't think I did the 200 at uh, that into high. Yeah, no, thanks. Yeah, I didn't do the 200. <laughs> and finding the it was four years ago, <laughs> and finding the balance in your day was always super crucial. Um, mm-hmm. and I remember, I mean, Mr. Carstens and them made a big effort to try get everyone 
at least 20 minutes, half an hour before your race to start slowly like warming up, getting the right mindset, the right mind, um, of mind. Um, so to try and get that planning right, um, massive. But I mean, the relay does stay a main event of any athletics meeting. So it was back of your head, something that you're looking forward to. Uh, mm. so that was my my point of point of reference. Ernest, um, I must say, I it was tough for me because I had a, I had a, a quad injury um, and I was a jumper. So I, I mm. in the morning. My mindset was only triple jump and long jump, triple jump and long jump the whole oh. day. And um, I remember after running, after jumping the, the, the triple jump, I had to go run the 200. Um, and then from the 200, I had to go back and do the long jump. Mm. Um, and then at a point, I remember Mr. Costin saying, look, we need you in the 400. But so I had to, I told him, look, I won't put anything in the 400, but I'll get us a point or two. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. And I pushed the 400 with my limping self. And mm -hmm. um, at the end, after that, it was just a mindset thing of, you know what, what do you have to hold of you have to hold on for that 11, 11, 10 seconds, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. um, you have to push and just finish and it's your last one. So you can rest after this. Mm. Yeah, that was just a mental thing that you, you had to do. Okay. Now, Mr. Carstens, of course, um, having to, to, to manage a team, um, I mean, some athletes would, would go about and do four events and the relay, whereas other schools will have um, a specialist in, in, a, in a certain event. How did you manage to keep the team sort of um, injury-free? And these boys managing to be um, very fast in that in that in that relay. Um, what what did you have to do? And Leidenberg is not the easiest place to actually run with the humidity and oh, it it, it was crazy. So how did you manage that? Look, um, the boys have actually said it already. Um, sorry, they're not boys anymore. They're gentlemen now, <laughs> young men. Um, we had a we we had a very fortunate situation of four talented um, boys there in the under 19, well under 17 for that matter as well, also won gold. Yes. And so we had that, but to keep them injury free was, <laughs> it's impossible. Um, I mean, you, you all know Ernest, Ernest always had an injury of some kind. <laughs> I think I had injuries, Kwanda, you had injuries. I, I mean, there were always injuries. That's part of athletics. Yes. But um, so the idea was to 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 get the, the preseason training uh, to a, to a higher level because then obviously um, the chances of injuries are smaller. But um, as Henrik also said, to get people to their events ahead of time so that they can warm up properly and get the uh, heads wrapped around the the race beforehand. So. So it's to get into that mental space um, beforehand is, is, is really important. But you know what, the, um, the athletics at Benrin uh, was basically built on participation. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, if you look at this relay team, yes, we had four very quick guys, but none of them really excelled in any of the other events. Um, Ernest got a gold in the in the triple jump and I think Silver in, in the long jump. And then I think Karula got Silver in the 400. Um, but we didn't really, that was it, you know. So this was a team running with their hearts. Yeah. Obviously we had the legs there mm. and the legs are really important and they, they, they did the hard work in the preseason and all that. Mm. But on the day, they ran with a heart. And that is mm. the thing. That makes a difference. Mm. How hungry are you? <clears throat> and they were hungry for that. Uh, mm. They wanted it. And they did it for their school. Mm. And, uh, you know, if you run for yourself, that's one thing. But if you, mm. if you run for a bigger cause, that's a different thing. And I can honestly say these these uh, these young gentlemen they did that they they worked together as a team and they did it for their school mm. and that was great. 
So oh, very proud of them, they always will be. Yeah, no, that's, that's beautiful. Now, gentlemen, now tell me, it's almost time for the race. Okay, you get together and you go through your um, last whatevers. What, what is it that you discussed as a team just to get you mentally ready? Because now it's, it's, it's crazy at that time. People are tired, people are, 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 are shouting, they, they, they want to see the, the relays. What did you have to say to each other just to get yourselves mentally ready? Um, I'll start with you, Edric. First and foremost, I think for us, was just running through the race step by step, just starting straight up with Kwanda that's running, that's starting. Stupid thing, Andy holding the baton in. Just step through it, small things so you know, he's in right, you're in left, and so forth, and everyone understand where you fit in. And just kind of working, we would all go to our different places and we kind of walk around each other and check where's the spaces that, the, the space that you have to kind of get your run up going, where he's going to hand you the bats and just kind of chat through that a little bit with each other. Um, what signals we're using, where where we understand each other. When he gets here, that's when you go and stuff like that. So I think just those nitty gritties were, um, were very important for us. And that also calms you down um, in the whole crowd, making a noise. Um, but I think trying to get, trying to make sure that, this, that the whole atmosphere and situation doesn't get the better of you, um, kind of take, your, take over, um, was very important for us. And I think we all chatted to each other and kept each other quite cool in the moment, which was fantastic. Mm. Gwanda, what did you then have to do, like for yourself, if it, <laughs> mentally, just to prepare for the race? I know you've spoken now as a team, but what did you have to do to, to, to get ready for the race? Um, I think uh, it really helped that there was a good spread of events, um, not only just between the relay team, but the events in general. I'd had high jump earlier in the day. And like you said earlier, Leidenberg is a very humid place to go and compete. And uh, we all know jumping events, you spend a lot of time in the sun, obviously. Um, but I made sure I was hydrated afterwards. And I just knew I had to get a good start because I knew if I got a good start and I got the baton off to Hadrick, um, we already had an advantage. And yeah, I think I just made, I just wanted to make sure that I could get the best start possible for my team. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what, what did you have to do? Um, so I think, like, like, like I said um, earlier, it's, it's, it's tough during the day uh, going through all those events. And the, the under-19 race is the worst race you can ever run because there's from under-14 girls, boys, 15 girls, boys, and so it goes on till the last mm. due. So you wait and watch everyone and the nerves build up and build up. Um, and mm. I think I remember speaking to the boys and we said, look, at this rate, it, it really is ours to lose because we are, mm. the times that we run are very evenly, evenly mm. spread out. And we said to ourselves, look, it's ours to lose. We must just believe in ourselves and, and want it the way we do. And I remember, like I said earlier, when, when we got to that, that our different spots, I told the guys I ran with that, if I catch that baton, hey, think twice about getting me. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so now it is time for the race. Okay, now I need you to please go through the race um, with me. So I sent you a video yesterday, and I, I know it, 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 it brought back goosebumps and not of you. I need to find out from start to finish how it all went. And, you know, it's a pity that Gurula is not here because also um, that changeover was crucial. Um, but Gwanda, you had to start. And then what can you tell me now in terms of um, the race itself? I think um, lining it up, we obviously, I'd been running very quick times throughout the season. Um, faster than all the other starters for the other schools. So I knew that if I run my my best 100 and I just get the baton off to Hadrick at the time I'd have to get it off to him, then we should be in a good position. Um, and we'd also work pretty, we'd like develop the kind of um, signals, our own signals. Like I know most people don't talk to each other during changeovers, but we, we had like a short communication where you know, like, okay, put your hand out now. And then when you put your hand out, the baton's there and you're gone. So I think that was also very important for us. 
Mm. And then Hedrick, the one that gives you the pattern, hands over the pattern, and you you need to do your thing. Um, just uh, explain that that moment with us. No, that's that's the biggest thing is getting that timing right with the baton. And I think Kwanda, you and I got it right quite well. Um, and from there, the back straight is where a lot of schools put some of their quick runners. So it was I just had to make sure that I at least just stick with the guys, run it as quick as I can to um, to stay with it, stay with the bunch, or at least see if I can build a lead on there. Um, and I think that actually worked out for us. Some of the guys that ran super quick times that were on the back straight, we got to bat and just before them and kind of held the gap. And that's essentially all I needed to do because we had Karula then to just run that corner. So mm -hmm. no, it was a... Uh, you're not right. <laughs> yeah. So, Mr. Carstens, if, if now you looked at the race, the baton goes to Kurula. Um, can you remember the moment um, where he started running? Can you can you explain um, and, and share with us what you saw there? Well, <laughs> there was a there was a little explosion. <laughs> Uh, obviously, Kwanda and, and Hendrik did well, and but it was all even Stevens up to that point. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there was any real uh, leader at that stage. Um, so we've we've done well to to be there, mm -hmm. but um, that run round the bend was electrifying. Uh, he just shot ahead. Eh? Um, mm -hmm. So when I saw that. I knew this is it because I knew Ernest. Uh, yeah, once, as he said, you know, if he gets the baton first, he's gonna he's gonna protect that with his life. So, uh, and he did only just. <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was it was exciting to see that that run run the bend because that mm. that definitely gave us the edge there. Mm. All right, now Ernest, of course, now Kurula hands over the baton to you. When I look at the video, I start seeing um, this one athlete from, from NHS, and I'm thinking, okay, so this is going to be a very interesting finish. Ernest, what, what went through your mind? And I, I know you said that um, you're not going to catch me, but when I was looking at it, I was like, oh, this guy is catching you. Um, explain your, 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 <laughs> your race. So uh, I think a lot of people, what a lot of people don't notice is that Karula and the and the NHS runner were were quite were quite like running together. Obviously, the inside lane was very short. It was a it was mm -hmm. a sharp bend, so mm -hmm. Karula had to run a, a longer a longer stretch there. Sure. So the the NHS finisher got the baton literally a second or split seconds um, mm -hmm. before me, mm -hmm. and I had to catch up from behind. So that it. I, I feel it was a motivation with me pushing to just get to him. And when mm. we got to each other on on the last 20, we mm. his biggest mistake, I feel, was putting his head in ex instead of his chest, which is how I actually won at the end. Um, mm. We have a good coach teaching us to put in chest first. Um, and the call, the call actually, because I, I said to myself, look, we won second, I'm happy. And mm -hmm. a call came from upstairs and they said, uh, look, did you guys see Penryn or NHS crossing first? And when that lady said, look, I saw Penryn, I just ran to the guys. That photo that you, you posted earlier, um, mm -hmm. that's when I ran to the guys and said, look, we won. Hedrick, Hedrick's eye, he didn't believe it. He was like, really? I was like, mm -hmm. me and Kwanda came flying away. So it was, it was quite amazing that last, that last stretch. Mm -hmm. Now, now, I just want to find out, um, yes, you've mentioned now that, you know, um, when you heard the call, the pendant one, I, you know, a photo finish is, is one of the best um, that, you know, one can go through. I mean, you as an athlete or you as athletes to see that and just to see that you've just won, you know, it's, 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 it's a beautiful moment. Emotionally, um, what, what what did it mean to you? How? Just explain, Kwanda. What 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 did it say to you? So, like for me, obviously, handing off the baton first, I can pretty much watch the rest of the race. Hmm. Um, I couldn't see much from watching like behind Hadrick, but when I saw Karula take off on that bend, I knew like now we're definitely in with a shot. And standing on the line, 
Um, it looked like, from my angle, it looked like NHS had crossed first. So I was like, okay, I'm, I was a bit bummed. But I was still happy because we'd set out for at least the top three finish and we achieved that. Mm-hmm. And then one of the officials is standing there on the line and he's looking at the camera and he's going back and forth. And Ernest comes up behind me and he's like, what's going on? I'm like, dude, I don't know. And the man looks at us and he's like, Pendrin. I'm like, oh my. <laughs> and I don't, I don't think I can even put that feeling in words. It was just unbelievable because we set out to achieve way more than we'd even expected. But we knew we were capable of it, and that's what made it even more special. Hmm. Hendrik, when you found out, what, uh, what, what went through your mind? No, I, I, I genuinely, genuinely thought that we came second. And I was, similar to Kwanda, I was really bummed. But at the same time, I was like, we secured a podium, and that was one of the goals that we had. Um, and uh, running back from essentially where Karula was at... Um, in, uh, the, the last bend, walking back there, I have no, re- no view of what the line looked like. And then all of a sudden, I'm running back there and Ernest starts running at me. And Kanda as on well, Ernest is like, we've won. And I just couldn't believe it. It was a slight moment of disbelief and then just absolute euphoria. It was mm-hmm. unreal. It's, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a highlight of the year. Um, to do all the training in your final year with the final event like that, it, it really is just the cherry on top. So it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Now, Ernest, you've said that, yeah, of course, you ran to your, to your, to your teammates and um, you shared a special moment and we've got that um, photo of you guys just smiling and some of you just being, what, what's happening? I can just, did we really do this? Now, I just want to find out from the man himself, um, the head of athletics then, if there were any tears or any goosebumps there, Mr. Carstens, when you found out that uh, Pendren won the race, um, no, what was your nothing. feeling? <laughs> Straight face, nothing. <laughs> uh, no, these guys know me. Um, I, I was after a, a full day of running around like a headless chicken on that field and mm. getting people to the uh, to the events on time. Um, I had no voice at that stage. So because mm-hmm. I couldn't speak, I had to cry. Yeah, I, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it, was, uh, it was emotionally charged. And uh, especially after, you know, the under-17s winning gold and then the under-19s winning gold, look, you can't ask for more. That was it. Um, that, just, that just made the season for me and it definitely uh, a huge highlight for me personally, mm-hmm. even though I can't take credit for anything, you know. Um, I mean, these guys, I'm, and, I, and I hope the, the athletes, the current athletes are listening because, um, you know, the coaches are really just, we, we are cheerleaders. We, we, we can't take the credit for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and these guys actually manage themselves. So from the conversation, you would have heard they manage themselves. And that, that really is, uh, for me, um, that, is, that is a huge, huge thing. Because uh, if it was me managing it and telling them what to do, it's not quite the same. But if you get to the, to the point where you manage yourself and, uh, and they've done that masterfully, then... Uh, then you're in a, in a fantastic spot. So well done to them again for managing themselves and and uh, and, and being mature in this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Now, um, gentlemen, you know what what you achieved in 2016 was was truly awesome um, for yourselves and um, for 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 Pendren. And you know, I know there are people that look up to you, and you know. We've got current athletes that are keen. Your, your, I mean, our current grade eights and nines are keen bunch, um, and your seniors are also keen. But I just want to ask you, what advice can you sort of give to to these youngsters? You know, to achieve what you guys have achieved, um, be it that one 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 race or you, Ernest, um, getting medals in, in in long jump and triple jump and so forth. What advice can you give? Um, the youngsters at Pendren at, um, today, um, starting with you, Ernest. Um, so I, I, from my side, I must say that um, 
just just take every opportunity that comes your way with both hands um and it won't just come to you it, it's hard work it's 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 discipline it's it's not showing a like saying to your coach i can't i can't i can't you always can it's just obviously when once you tell yourself that you can't then that's that's where it stops that's where it will stop um so mm-hmm. they must just not have the 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 mindset of i can't they must push mm-hmm. um they must believe in themselves and i mean I, i've seen myself being in the low felt the whole time with the with the my current grade eights and stuff i've seen them do sports i've seen them do athletics and it, it, i feel they still have the mindset of i can you know mm-hmm. um they push whether we're a small school or a big school or small mm-hmm. school against big schools rather um then that mindset must go it's not mm-hmm. small schools against big schools it's it's myself against big schools and it's mm-hmm. it's just up to to me to believe that am i a big school candidate or a mm-hmm. competitor mm-hmm. or am i just one of those um mm-hmm. so yeah no a wonderful and a star magic now i completely agree i think i think believing in yourself is is probably the biggest aspect uh, mm-hmm. it is definitely um a smaller school and we are very often the dogs with um various events and these races as well and i think if you believe in yourself and you really put in the hard work and you put in the hard yards then there's no one that can tell you that you can't do it so mm-hmm. you bring your heart in and you you really in all the work that you can then you can get the best results that you can i mean with inti we won the um, percentage trophy which yes. is actually meaning that per size per capita of um your school that competing that you would essentially if everyone was the same size yeah. so i mean we have the talent so the people that are there now really just take every opportunity um believe in yourself and you will reap the, the rewards mm. thank you for that hedrick kwanda um i think my former teammates have pretty much mentioned everything um but like they said it is very important to just believe in yourself and believe in your abilities and the people that are around you because you're never in it alone you do have a support structure your coaches your friends your teammates mm-hmm. who can eventually become a part of your family in their own capacity and um also just taking care of your body i remember the year before um i had a few injuries and like mr costin said we were all actually carrying injuries that year but we did well to micromanage everything and we ended up coming out on top. Thank you, Gwanda. Mr. Carstens? Yeah, I, I really just want to celebrate um, a couple of things. Um, obviously, these guys, um, for what they've achieved, but um, the athletic coaches um, who are mm. still coaching there, <laughs> <laughs> at Denrin and they put in so many hours and uh, so I really want to celebrate them and and the amazing atmosphere that they create and fantastic team spirit so I I really do miss them and uh, and we had great times together mm. and then um you know what yes we we celebrate these great moments but what what meant the most to me really at uh, at these events uh with the participation mm-hmm. because um that year we came within 20 i think we were 20 points behind barfla you know we we were we were shoulder to shoulder with with schools double our size and almost triple mm-hmm. our size and and that just meant so much to me um because it 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 wasn't necessarily the gold medals that got us there it was the participation and it was mm-hmm. when i went to athletes and asked them please ernest mentioned there you know can you please do this for me do that for me you know they just they turn up and um and they did it so i absolutely loved those days because the real penrin showed mm-hmm. Uh, the spirit of participating and doing it for your team and not doing it for yourself not caring about you know whether i'm going to be on the podium or not but i will do it for my school and and that attitude was amazing um 
these guys all know I love athletics and you know to walk or to run is second nature to us humans so mm. if I can send a message to the current athletes they you know keep on running keep running <laughs> don't yeah. stop um, mm. and don't don't just think you know I'll run for my school and then slob afterwards keep going mm. through through your life and um, but then obviously the most important thing is be thankful for what you've got you know sure. uh, we've got talents and but we've got a lot of things to be thankful for, uh, which we see now in these days. So, so thank God every single day for what you've got, and um, mm -hmm. and um, also lift him up through through the talents that you've got. Mm -hmm. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for for your time. Um, it's it's been a great interview, and it's it's actually good to catch up with every one of you. Um, thank you for what you did for Pendrin Sport. Um, you've you've left a a legacy here at the school, and for 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 years. So that's that's you know that's that's your achievement. So thank you for everything that you've done for for Pendant Sport. And I I just want to wish you all the best um, in your future and, uh, endeavors. And yeah, always always remember that um, Jesus loves you. And yeah, please take care. And I will see you soon. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Good to be here. Cheers, gentlemen. What's up, everyone? It was great to see you all. <laughs> Look after yourselves. I'm going to bed now, by the way. You're still recording, Munir. You're still recording. I'm still recording. All right. <laughs> um, to our viewers on Instagram Live, Thank you so much for tuning in. You can leave your comments after the show. And please just know that um, I'll see you on Saturday with um, more, 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 more interviews. Thank you so much. And God bless. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you next week um, on Wednesday when I have my next guests. Have a blessed weekend. And remember, Jesus loves you. Take care. Bye.